Because we're going to do number 11 right now. So if we could have your attention. There you go. No. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I just want to make sure I go through this to uh, make sure we're all at least on the same page before I go over the other uh, types of problems we have. So first of all, again, just like parabolas, we need to determine there's two types of ellipses we can have. We can have one ellipse where we have a major axis of symmetry, like here your x-axis is going to be the major axis, means the longer part is going to be your major axis symmetry, or we could have it where we're going to have a vertical axis of symmetry. And of course, just like parabolas, these have two different equations. All right? For ellipses, the way that we're going to be able to determine this is we're going to look at um, our major axis of symmetry has a length of 2a. So it doesn't matter where it is, if it's vertical or if it's horizontal, the distance of it is 2a. All right? And our major axis <laughs> so our major axis is going to be um, always under whatever um, term we have. If you look at this, the other term, our minor axis, we call is going to be 2b. And you can obviously see that b is smaller than a, right? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to look at this is, if I notice, what we have is our general form. Our a, we either have a squared or b squared, and I'll, I'll write out the formula here in a second. But whichever one is larger is going to be your a squared. So I can say that this is going to be my a squared. Since my a squared is under my y coordinate, I know that this is going to be a vertical axis of symmetry. And just think of like the y coordinate. That's going to be you know like you're on your y axis. So therefore, the larger point is going to be stretching along that y axis. So let's just write out. So now that I know I have a, ver um, a vertical. Uh, in horizontal axis symmetry, let's just write out the formula, x minus h squared all over b squared plus y minus k squared all over a squared. Wait, so the a squared is under the y and it's a horizontal axis symmetry? It's a vertical. If it's, if it's under the y, it's a vertical. If your a, your larger number was under the x, then it's going to be a horizontal. Can it's going to be stretched horizontally. All right? Does anybody have any questions on how to determine that? Because you're going to have to be able to determine that just like the parabolas. Parabolas is a little bit easier because you remember, oh, x squared, that's vertical, right? Or y squared, that's going to be horizontal. Here, you just need to determine what is my larger number because a is always larger than b, right? Your a is always larger than your b. Since my a is larger than my b, whatever my a is under, that's going to determine if it's vertical or horizontal. So they want us to, to determine our vertice, or I'm sorry, first our center. Well, in this problem, guys, remember center is going to be the exact same as our vertex in a parabola. So center is going to be h comma k. In this problem, we have negative 3 comma 5. All right? So I'll graph something over here. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? Now, the next thing is we need to determine what our vertices are. Well, our vertices take a distance on whatever the main important thing that you need to understand why we have that major axis is because your vertices, your vertex, and your foci all lie on your major axis of symmetry. So we determine that this is going to have a major axis, a vertical major axis of symmetry. And then what I need to do is if here is my center, I'm going to have a vertical axis of symmetry. So now what I need to do is determine if here's my center, my two vertices, right? We're not dealing with the horizontal, so let's just erase this. So now if here's my ver vertex, my two vertices are going to be a distance of <coughs> A, right? A up and A down. So I need to determine now what is the value of A. Well, we have 25 equals A squared, so therefore, a equals 5. Correct? So if I say, all right, well, here's my center at negative 3, 5, and my vertice has to be a distance up and a distance down. Make sense? 
So the first vertice is another five up. So if I'm at negative three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then down five, which would be at zero. So my vertices are going to be at, they're still going to be negative three. The h coordinate did not change, but now I'm going to be negative three comma ten and negative three comma zero plus or minus five. I found the value of A, which is five, and I added it and I subtracted it. So here's my center, here's my vertice, and there's my vertice. I know my graph's not perfect, but it's okay. We cool right now? Wait, did what? Did what? Oh, I see. The next thing we need to take a look at is now we need to figure out our foci. You look and like I'm stupid. No, I'm not looking at you. You're stupid <laughs> at all, but I gave you that look because you were staring right in and I was just... Um, I'm spacing out. <laughs> and it doesn't help when you keep on turning around, too. You need to help me stay Okay, Erin, you've covered this so far. We're at. Yes. I just found the center and I took the vertices, <laughs> right? Yeah. Erin, and then we figured out what A, <laughs> and then I'm adding and subtracting that to there. So the next thing I want to do is we need to figure out what the foci is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have an issue with the foci because the foci. The distance of their foci is C. Okay? And the problem with C is we know that here our minor axis is 2B, our major axis is 2A, but we don't know the value of the C. Luckily, we do have a relationship to find the value of C, which is A squared minus B squared. All right, so we can figure out what the value of c is as long as we know what a squared, minus a squared and b squared are. So I have c squared equals a squared, which is 25, minus b squared, which is 16. c squared equals 9, c equals 9, c equals 3, right? So now our foci is going to be the exact same thing. Notice how our center, our foci, and our um, vertices all lie on the same major axis. So now, if I know that this distance is three, all I'm going to do is add three and subtract three to the x. I'm sorry, to the y coordinate of your center. So my foci still going to be negative three. I'm not moving left or right at all. But now it's going to be negative three, five plus uh, three, which is eight comma, negative 3, 5 minus 3, which is 2. All right. And so there, there's my foci. There's my foci. And I'm not going to graph the minor axis. The minor axis would have been 2b. So that would have been 16, so we would add um, 2 over 2, so it would actually been right there and something like that. The graph with the minor axis to go through. But just to give you guys a rough sketch, the main important thing is remembering these are all on your major axis. Okay? Cool. Okay. Yay, that's a scary. Is that 